Welcome back everybody and today we're gonna have a look at the big book of dinosaurs so this particular book I have great memories growing up as a kid this is not my original copy and I'll get to the story about that shortly um, yeah this brings back a lot of great childhood memories and I'm sure that all, all of you have books that you have grown up with that you may have borrowed or owned that have you know great memories and, and an attachment to so I actually found this particular copy here at the thrift store yesterday for for two dollars and when I saw it I just like I nearly fainted I was so happy because I had lost my original copy so yeah so look this book was um, 1989 it was it was published in 1989 and I had picked up this particular book uh, in 1990 uh, when I went to Canada and America with my family to visit some family and have a holiday and it was a real great experience it was the first time I was on a plane and at that time I was obsessed with dinosaurs and dino riders were kicking on at that time dino riders were kicking kicking some ass and you know as a kid growing up you know in the, in the 1990s what else could you ask for it was, it was a really good time and and I was lucky when I went to Canada in America I had picked up a few things like my parents bought me they bought me some Legos which I was into really into which I still have a lot of space Lego and dinosaurs and this was one book that I had purchased when I was in Canada America so my story with this particular with this book um, where I'm living now, I've been here for about five to six years, and when I moved into my into this residence, I had um, me, me and my me and my wife we had um, put some books aside to give to charity. We had had a lot of books. My wife likes reading books as well, and I had a whole bunch of books. But see, when I had this book, I had actually lost the slip cover, so it was like. You know, it's just a hardcover, so it doesn't really say much. I think, does it even say it on the spine? Yeah, so it says it on the spine. So, what actually happened was, this book was mixed in with a bunch of other books. And we gave them to charity, and I lost, I lost the book. The book was gone, and it wasn't until maybe two years later when I was going through my books... And I couldn't find it, and then I realized it must have been lost when we donated books to charity. And I actually lost a few other prehistoric books as well. Some I was able to repurchase, but some I still haven't been able to locate because obviously these books from the 1970s and 80s are not quite easy to find these days. So... Um, yeah, so I had lost the book and, and obviously I had been trying to find it and yesterday while I was working on my break, I worked a really long, long shift, 13 hours, I had a good uh, hour and a half break. So I went to the local thrift stores in, in the area and didn't find anything, you at the usual items that I look for, like technology, um, books, toys, etc. And there was one, one more stop, but I was feeling a bit tired and lazy, and and someone like myself, who always goes to the thrift stores and op shops, I thought, you know, I don't want to go, but you know what, I better go, because you never know, and didn't have luck with any of the other items that I usually look for and went to the books and didn't see anything in the children's books and yeah and I, and I found this gem 
like mixed in with with like you know with animal books and history and etc so yeah sometimes you just got to listen to your instincts so so yeah so as growing up as a kid this book has a lot of really has a really at the time had a lot of good information great artwork and and a lot of new discoveries at the time. I remember Bionics. The first time I knew about Bionics was from this book. Um, classic 1990s where you see Deinicus always attacking a Trentosaurus and so forth. This is when Deinicus was becoming popular. And also, like I'll show you right now, there's a particular um piece of artwork that I, that I had actually ripped out of the book and I had it displayed onto my onto my wall this was I got it right here this was actually um blue tacked onto my wall uh, as a kid until I was about probably my early 20s it was like I used it as a poster and every time I looked at this artwork, it just reminded me of the book. And I don't know if you guys can see it. So we've got a T-Rex here. Like obviously the book is completely inaccurate in today's standards. Obviously times have changed. But yeah, this was on my wall for so many years. And just to see it again in the, in the thrift store, when I found the book yesterday, I was just like, I was so excited and I was telling the the store clerk there, I go, oh, I had this book out when I was a kid and like, they, they couldn't really care, you know, and yeah, great memories, really, really great, great memories, like, like I actually absolutely adore this book. Thank you to Dougal Dixon for this, like... I actually um, Wikipedia him yesterday and like he's still alive and I hope you're doing well. I know you're in your in your 70s or so and I hope you're doing well. I just want you to know that you know, this book meant, means a lot to me because this was a big part of my childhood, especially a young boy growing up as a big fan of dinosaurs. So... Thank you for that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through like I do with most of the books on this channel. We're going to go through every page and we're going to have a look at the artwork and the discoveries and everything. So please join me guys and let's, let's enjoy the big book of dinosaurs. So here we go. We've got the big book of dinosaurs here. Dougal Dixon. The artwork is from Stephen Stephen Kirk. And I like to say, firstly, no copyright intended. All artwork belongs to their owners. I am reviewing the book. We're going through the book, so the book is not lost to time. It's a great book, and everyone deserves an opportunity to see the great content of this awesome book. So, as we open up, as I said before, um, I had lost the cover, the slip cover of my book as a kid growing up. And I remember on this page, I had my name and everything in here. I remember I, I, used, I wrote like my name and do not touch this book or else. And I spelled else with an A, which is pretty funny. So, here, are, here we've got a classic image of the Inguanodon. Well, I guess the, in, the initial paleontologists thought the Inguanodon may have looked like, and they had found that the nose th thumb they used as a, as a horn there. So, this is history right here. So, great to see that. 
And I absolutely adore this. I absolutely adore it. What a what a great piece of art this is. You know, you got you can think of it as a sunrise or a sunset. It looks like a early Jurassic period. You got a pterosaur there, and you got this little you know you got this little dinosaur here trying to catch a mule. And we can actually go to that and see what it was. It's actually a Silosaurus. Cilar and yep, Jurassic period. And it's trying to find the pterosaur. So great to see that. And I, I remember this as well. This is an, an early period of life's... Um, in Earth's period, this is, I think, the Silurian, the Devonian period, where plants have just started and we don't have leaves yet. They're just really primitive plants. So, yeah, when you think about it, imagine going back to these times and it would have been quite alien. So, I'll skim through this part quickly it's just about more about geography and so forth in in this book we do get some references to modern animals but obviously this is more about the food chain kind of runs over the simpsons where you have the food chain you have man and everything going into it so we've got a bit about fossils here you know when i see people back in those days i actually like to see like what they were what they were wearing and how they were dressed and you know you go back in time it's kind of this is over 30 40 years back in time so it's interesting to go back like you think to yourself like where are these people now So, yep, the coming of the dinosaur, and we've got all the, the periods here of, of Earth. And my two favourite periods are right here, the Cretaceous and Permian. I absolutely love the Permian period. It's like, imagine what would have been if that extinction never happened, like, how would have life evolved? It's, yeah interesting so we've got some classic fossils here this is a classic fossil it may be classic because i rem i remember this from this book but i do have remembered this particular fossil from a few other books as well growing up but look uh, i know fossils are rare and stuff but this is like this is impressive you know and look and for a book that's like over 30 years old the images are really, really good. Like that's really good, and we've got a trilobite hand. Yeah. Got some lungfish, and yep. So this is obviously pre-dinosaurs, and we got a bit of wood there, fossilized wood, and um, that like. Back back when I had this book, we still haven't um, we haven't solved that mystery at that time, you know, where those big arms belong to. Got some Permian here, Palmetrodon, my favourite. All right, so we've got some plants, and now we're getting some dinosaurs here. We've got some early Triassic dinosaurs. We've got. Platosaurus and one that you don't hear about much. I'm gonna butcher the name, so excuse me. Anchiosaur, Anchiosaurus. This is one that I'm looking at it now. I've never really heard much about this dinosaur, even in today's standards. So obviously these are prosauropods. We can see like they're gonna evolve into sauropods. So, uh, 
Splatosaurus is obviously pretty famous, but it's good that the book um, has some other um, unique species. And obviously we've got our classic um, Diplodocus. And oh, I'm going to butcher the name of this. Um, Mimenchosaurus. It's one of the really long neck and long tail. Which is good. And as you can see, we've got some nice artwork and fossils. But the, art, the artwork is going to get better. So trust me. Camarasaurus. And we've got another... We've got a sticker saw here. Which one is that? Hi, Yangosaurus, the, the Chinese Stegosaurus. And it's funny that when this book was made in 1989, that it's amazing to see the discoveries that have come out of China since then, especially with, um, you know, the, the feathered dinosaurs and so forth. Amazing the wealth of um, fossils yet to be discovered from China. All right, so we got Stegosaurus here, some of people's favorite. And it's, I really like that picture there. We've got a good old Stegosaurus having a munch on a, looks like some sort of prehistoric conifer. It's, re it's really good because it's got, got a bit of an action there. So that's what I like about these old books. There's a lot of action happening with the pictures. We've got another Stegosaurus here. Which one is this one? Tunjulungosaurus. I think that was the biggest out of the um, Chinese Stegosaurus. And I think it was the second biggest after Stegosaurus at the time. We've got some guys digging some fossils. Got their hard hats on. Saltosaurus there. Not the best photo. I never liked that page. Now we're into the undergrowth feeders. Alright, we've got the front cover here. The Hadrosaurus, Corophosaurus and Lumbarosaurus. Beautiful artwork. This book's about B3 size, I would say. Look at that, the whole page is covered. You don't get that today. Or even in some of the 90s books. Amazing. And we've got various head crests here. And I guess that they're trying to compare to modern animals that have some sort of horns or crests for, you know, um, for various uses. Either for for mating or most likely would have been from mating. They do did think that they that they produce sound and so forth with these crests. We've got some really nice fossils here. We've got some ankylosaurs and we've got a the mummified ankylosaur here and and we've got the mummified antosaurus. That was one of the prior to that. Oh, it escapes my mind the uh, the 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 one that I found in Canada that preserved a lot of the organs and stuff that another kind of like ankylosaurus type of dinosaur geez, I can't the, I can't get the name in my mind at the moment but prior to that this was one of the most famous fossils to have all the impressions of other tissues apart from bone i remember like so that this is pretty famous like a lot of books in the early 90s and late 80s picture this antosaurus here so yeah i just can't remember the name of the the canadian ankylosaur or not a, not a saurus. it was either in the ankylosaurus family or the notosaurus family i can't remember the name so i apologize for that We've got a nice big, again, big picture of a triceratops here. Really, really nice. And with the crests, who knows what um, colors they would have to 
to attract their mates and so forth. It would have had many functions, obviously, for protection and attracting mates. And we've got more ceratopsins here. He's my favorite, Styracosaurus. And we've got Pachycephalosaurus here. Headbutting, which was another way that I love to illustrate them in books. And a famous skeleton of Triceratops. And I remember always looking at this, I used to think to myself, as you can see, there's like a, there's a scar there. Like there's a big cut or scar in the bone. And like who caused that? Was that a T-Rex or was that... Another Triceratops, you know, these two rivaling for mates, but yeah, that's a, another famous, you know, famous fossil there. All right, so there's a bit of controversy in this book with the predators. Some of them, as we'll get through the book, hunters and scavengers, but here we've got hunters as, as the book um tries to explain so we've got a beautiful picture here of ceratosaurus beautiful i love the retro upright look absolutely love it that's an amazing amazing picture amazing piece of artwork there beautiful and classic in the of the 90s the Deinoicus attacking the Trentosaurus. So these guys are pack hunting and looking for a meal. And as we know, we've come a long way how these dinosaurs would have looked. And I guess every dinosaur in this book. And here's another famous fossil, another famous battle scene, the Proceratops with the Velociraptor. Where they where they both fossilized together. This is, this has to be in the top, probably top three fossils ever, ever, the, these two. So it's just so iconic. I've got Megalosaurus. Megalosaurus, Megalosaurus the toe, the footprint of Megalosaurus. Is it the toes? Yeah. Really Jurassic. Predator. And look at that. My favorite Spinosaurus of all. The this this 1980s Spinosaurus. This is not it like this is not even Jurassic Park free Spinosaurus. So we've come a long way to having this guy as just you know like a land predator to what he is now where semi-aquatic Spinosaurus so yeah this is vintage right here so and this is probably one of my most favorite um, pieces of art in the book amazing bloody amazing and here we've got again we've got a uh, we've got a Trentosaurus it's gonna be about I'm gonna bring it closer because I remember I used to stare at these heaps as a kid. So we've got a Deinoicus there stalking a Trentosaurus with its offspring. And you know we've got the prehistoric plants and so forth. And I just really I really like that. You know, it's set in the scene. We've got, you know, predator and prey. And I'm just thinking like obviously this is probably in in America. Now is this still around? Is this still around? And if if it is, or if you've seen it, let me know. Like, that's a big painting there. That's huge. I wonder if that's still around there. I hope it is, because it doesn't matter if times change and we make new discoveries and we correct the past. But it's all. It's all history. Here we go. We've got some Triassic goodness here. With Psilophysis and the cannibalism happened here. Because they did find 
in the fossils, the babies in the in the stomach, and that could have been for various reasons. It could have been because there was no food around. It could have been because of um, competition or whatever. But another great piece of artwork there. And look at that. Absolutely beautiful. I remember I just used to stare at this page because you don't see much in in like in darkness, you know. Always you see dinosaurs during the day, but never in night. And I truly believe there were a lot of nocturnal dinosaurs around. And there was one found in Australia in my state. Uh, I can't pronounce the name. Sorts of L. I can't pronounce the name, but it's it's on Walking with Dinosaurs anyway. It's uh, I think it's the fourth episode. Yeah, and they had the big, really big eyes, and they could they could they could see at night. Leo is something something. I can't pronounce the name, but yeah. So they predicted like dinosaurs, especially around in Ant Antarctica and the bottom of Australia, southern Australia, when it's connected connected to Antarctica. There may have been dinosaurs that were nocturnal, so this is a great, it's just a great image. You don't see this stuff every day, so I remember this really was cemented into my brain and just the way it's painted with the shadows and the action and I adore it. I'm so happy that I'm actually, you know, I can, I can show the world this book because it's awesome. We've got an ostrich dinosaur here, and again, look at it, look at, beautiful, look at the sky. There it is. And as we're going through the book, I just, what I loved about this book is how we just had hunters, scavengers, plant eaters, um, you know, just various you know, like, it's just, everything's grouped together very simply, so it's really catered to to children of, as myself back in the time, and young adults, and even adults too, and, and you've got, you know, you've got great artwork, and you've got fossils here as well, with, for, as evidence, and yeah, look at those Proceratops eggs, imagine trying to put this together. And we've got um, the good mother here, Maziasura. Look at these kids. What are they what are they up to these days? And we've got um Oberaptor here. And yeah, Ovaraptors come a long way now. A lot of um, paleontologists don't expect Ovaraptor to even look like this or even rob eggs. So times have changed. Anyway, let's continue on because I know I'm blabbering on. We've got scavengers here, and I didn't. What I I didn't agree with this book at this part. I didn't believe these large, you know, these large meat eaters were scavengers, but I believe they scavenged when the opportunity presented itself. I do believe they were hunters, but they would have scavenged when they could. So we had Allosaurus there. We got Yungjolungosaurus, a Chinese Allosaur. And we got T-Rex with the fun day in the picture great piece of artwork as I said um, had this on my wall for my original copy and what I really like about this book we've got some flowering plants and that's when they appeared in the Cretaceous got Tabasaurus there so we've got some great fossils here Baronyx this is when I first learnt about Baronyx
We've got the Onosaur Mysteries and we've got the Brontosaurus, Apatosaurus Mystery here. Yeah, and we, um, that mystery is being solved. It was controversy with the naming and I won't get into it, but there are some good YouTube videos on that. And we've got the hands of Dinosaurus and we've discovered the dinosaur for that, the relative of Therizinosaurus. But back in those days, we didn't know, you know what I mean? So... These are two mysteries I can say that are, that are, that are solved. And there's this dinosaur here that's missing the head and the neck, so... Oh, I'm gonna try and pronounce this. I, I haven't even looked into this, if it's been solved, but it's... I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. You know what? I'm just gonna show it. There we go, right there. It's almost complete. It lacks the head and neck. And the structure of the tail is unusual and sets it apart from other sauropod dinosaurs. So, anyway, I'm not sure. Believe it or not, looking at this book and the name, I've never seen that name anywhere else. So, who knows? I'll have to look into that. You never know. Did we find the head? Did we find something close? And I think that were predicting if it had a, if Paki Rhinosaurus had a horn or not. You got like an embryo there. All right, so now we get to see reptiles. Some nice models. And we've got various fossils. We've got some flying reptiles here. And here's one that doesn't get enough love these days, but did in the in the eighties. Okay, it's gonna be hard to pronounce. Ram for Hynotchus. I can't pronounce it, but anyway, it's that pterosaur with the tail with the little kind of little flapper skin at the bottom, kind of round. No. In these days, it was quite popular. We've got more pterosaurs, and as we know, pterosaurs do not fossilize very easily. Birds and mammals, Archaeopatrix, our famous, and now we're going into the mammals, which is he's a famous skeleton, he's a famous fossil. This is probably the most famous fossil, or definitely the top five. Archaeopatrix, Archaeopatrix. I remember looking at this and I used to freak out like it's got feathers, you know? That's one famous fossil right there. The missing link. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, carry on. So this is more about prehistoric mammals. How do we know? We've got iguanodon there. And yeah, see, Iguanodon, they found the nose, the thumb, and they put it on the nose. It's not Iguanodon right there, but anyway. Uh, bone Wars. We've got Marshy here, and Cope, Copeland, Copeland, Marsh, and Marsh, yep, and Cope, not Copeland, Cope. <laughs> Got some iguanodons. Look at this. And yeah. So I know this was a real long video, and you know, if you've actually watched the whole thing, um, thank you. We've got our Ceratosaurus again. This is an amazing book. It's classic eight, 70s, 80s style, big. Like really, like big size like this, big pictures. I wish they made them like they used to. So a lot of nostalgia here, obviously, you know, like I love the book because of those reasons. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And let me know if you had this book or read it or borrowed it. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.